How's it going, Grant here, and welcome back to another camera samples video. Today I've got the ZTE Blade Z Max. As of this video, you can find it at Metro PCS for $100, or even free if you're willing to port in a number from another carrier. And what really makes this interesting is it's got a dual camera setup on the rear with a 16 megapixel primary sensor, along with a 2 megapixel secondary sensor, which enables some interesting camera modes that you can really find on some more expensive flagship phones like bokeh mode, portrait mode, and even a monocard mode. And I'll show you some samples from those camera modes a little bit later in this video. It's also capable of recording 1080p video, and this front camera, which you're watching right now, is an 8 megapixel sensor, capable of recording the 720p video, so unfortunately no full HD 1080p video from the front camera. But this year you've got a bunch of inexpensive phones with great camera phones that are capable of taking some really nice photos and video. So is the ZTE Blade Z Max one of those? Let's go ahead and find out. So this is just a clip of me walking and talking here handheld with the Blade Z Max, just to give you an idea of the stability of the camera while walking and just hand holding the device itself. So this might be good for all you vloggers out there, or if you just want to be able to walk and use your front-facing camera. Hopefully this will give you a better idea of the quality as well as stability. Hey everyone, so I'm here in the park for this rear-facing camera test of the Blade Z Max. Hope you're having a nice day with some great weather wherever you are as well. I'll pan back over to this cleverly disguised cell tower, and we'll test out the 4x digital zoom here. So as expected, a little shaky and definitely a bit noisy there on those fake leaves. But that's expected out of a digital zoom like this. Zoom back out, go back over to the structure here, and we'll test out the zoom on it. So, still a bit of shake, but not nearly as noisy. So, it's actually pretty good here. Zoom back out. Now, it does have autofocus, so I'll bring in an Android figurine here, put it in front of the camera, and as you can see, it focused right up on the Android figurine. Nice little depth of field there on the building. And we'll take it away, and it focused right up on the building there. Bring it back in. Get it to focus up on the figurine. So not the fastest, obviously, but pretty functional. There you go. So that's the autofocus here on the Blade Z Max. Nice little blurred out background there. And so we'll also go ahead and test the stability here. I'll walk down these stairs. Now there's no stabilization built in, obviously, no optical image stabilization on the hardware, no software stabilization. So this will give you an idea of how it is to just walk around and shoot with the rear-facing camera on the Blade Z Max. It's being shot at 1080p. Let me know what you think.
guys, so this is some low light footage from the rear facing camera. It's just about sunset. The sun's almost down right now, as you can see right there. And so I'll just do a slow pan around here so you can see what the quality is like in low light, almost nighttime. Usually it'd be pretty grainy, but there's a hint of light there, so it shouldn't be too bad. And we can even test out the zoom here. So that's four times digital zoom. And of course it's gonna be extra grainy and low light there. We pull back a little bit to two times. And that's not as bad. Let me try to pan around in the zoom so you can see the shakiness, if at all, when zoomed in. Zoom all the way back out. And I'll walk around here so you can get a sense of stabilization here from the rear facing camera in low light. Usually in low light, this is where stabilization really tanks, especially when there's no hardware software stabilization like you have here in the Blade Z Max. But at least with the viewfinder, it's not looking too bad here. And we'll aim it up at that light. And some of these other lights here. I don't really see a lot of lens flaring going on, so that's pretty good. Some focus hunting, because this does have autofocus. I don't see any way to do a focus lock. And it's going to focus on a little bit more in low light, like most cameras will. But all being told, for a $100 phone, this isn't looking too bad. So let me know what you think. Hi everybody, so I just wanted to end the video here with some low light sample footage from the front facing camera. And the sun just went down and I'll just kind of pan around here so you can see that. And it'll be hard to see, but the sun just went down there. And I'll pan around so you can kind of see what it looks like when you pan in the front facing camera in some low light here. And yes, there's an orangish tinge to this because that's pretty much the lights that you can see back here. That's the color of those lights, so it's pretty much true to life and what it looks like right now. Some lens flaring going on there, but not too bad and kind of expected really. Most cameras will do that, even high-end cameras, and not uncommon for lower end phone, budget phones to do that as well. But from what I've seen here, at least in the viewfinders, it's looking pretty good. Uh, I just want to close my final thoughts on the cameras here on the Blade Z Max. I think in good light, you're going to get some really good photos and videos as you saw there. Um, the extra dual camera modes like bokeh mode, portrait mode, monocolor are all fun. I think monocolor is probably the most fun mode. You can get creative, probably more creative than I could uh, with playing around with that mode. I think the bokeh and that black background blur from that mode came out pretty well. Even though you can kind of see the edges of the subjects weren't perfect, I mean, that's kind of to be expected on a device like this. But the fact that you even have that option, and they come out looking pretty good as long as you're not zooming all the way in and trying to pixel peep all the time. Uh, the more than used one look actually pretty good, especially for sharing on social media, etc. So just to have that option on a phone at this price point is really amazing to me. In low light, of course, these cameras are going to struggle a bit. You saw that a little bit in some of the uh, low light footage from the still photos. It's actually not looking too bad right here. One thing you note about video audio is that after recording and playing it back on the device itself, it sounded really low and tinny and almost unusable for some reason, which is weird because YouTube videos, music, and everything else playing back to the phone on this background speaker actually sound pretty good. But recorded video just did not sound really good. I thought something was wrong with the device. Once I offloaded it to my computer, this is what you're hearing here on YouTube now. So the yeah, audio is actually pretty good. But if you're experiencing low and weird sounding playback on the device itself after recording some video, uh, that seems to be normal for some reason. I'm not sure what's going on there. But other than that, let me know what you think about all the photos and video. I think these cameras have actually exceeded my expectations for the price point at which this phone is at. But let me know what you thought. Let me know what you think about the quality here, the audio, video, everything. Uh, if you have any other questions about the phone, the camera, whatnot, just leave them in the comment section. And as always, thanks for watching.